Welcome to my thoughts on X Men: The Animated Series, 1992. This episode, uh, season one, episode eleven. Thoughts. This episode is called Days of Future Past, Part One. So let, uh, yeah, right. Please support the strike. sag after deserve your support. There will be links in the description box. So yeah, let's dive right in. Really, really cool, dark future. You know I love the Terminator. Always enjoy these stories that, you know, it's it's baby's first Terminator. It's Terminator, but, you know, kids can also watch it, which I'm not sure I would recommend. I don't know, I guess maybe some of the last couple, but I guess maybe the fifth one, but not not really, not until they're teenagers. And I appreciate that, like, you know, attentive viewers can probably tell that's actually Wolverine, but, like, we he's not in costume from right away, which, you know, right away tells us, okay, you know, normally he doesn't hide. He's usually in costume, so there's something going on here. And he does get a cool, you know, he, he jumps out, gets the, the costume on and, and attacks, but he is also less powerful here. Bishop relatively easily takes him out, and, you know, Wolverine points out, you know, they, they hate all mutants, not only rebels. You know, it's just a matter of time. Bishop doesn't believe it, you know... They, they arrive, and the, the Sentinels are like, no, oh, you're all going to die. We don't need you anymore, which, you know, yeah, fascism, you know, yeah. You know, they'll, they'll use you until they no longer need you. And legitimately chilling when we see the X-Men gravestones with years on, and yeah. And, yeah, they mention the ass the assassination of the 90s, you know, which, yeah, it's right away we, you know, the, the way they talk about it, clearly there's something big. And, you know, they know who the assassin is, but they don't say it out loud, so it remains a twist, you know, and then at the end of the episode we see it must be Gambit, you know, and... Let's see. Yeah, very, very cool. That, you know, they talk about how important it is that the machine is destroyed after going through, but they aren't able to destroy it, and um, Nimrod approaches, and, yeah, you know, Bishop comes to in in the present. I, I like that at first he thinks, oh, I, you know, I didn't travel through time. Might as well have taken the subway. You know, because of the, the buildings that, you know, nice little wink and nudge that maybe, you know, no part of America should look quite that bad. Let's see. But, but yeah, you know, Bishop comes to very, very confused, you know, which, like, we get the sense that, you know, it's maybe like... Maybe they hadn't tested time travel yet to know if someone would end up confused. Maybe it was a thing of like, I mean, he doesn't heal the way Wolverine does. Wolverine was supposed to travel through time. He would have healed and not been confused, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, and we, you know, we learned that Gambit really struggles with, you know, he doesn't, he's not comfortable inside a cell, even just briefly visiting Beast. And I like that, you know, there's some teenagers running past and they talk about, yo, we're going to play the Assassin cartridge, you know, the video game. And we briefly see the cover and it's like, that's the Punisher. You know, it didn't have to be, but they had the rights. So, yeah, makes it, you know, and it's like, you know, if you don't know who the Punisher is, you don't know what he looks like, you're not going to think twice about him. It's, oh, Assassin. But, you know, for, if you know, you know. And, yeah, and he now thinks that all of the X-Men are assassins. And he, he takes the bus. And, yeah, pretty cool fight, the X-Men fighting. Bishop, I appreciate that he actually, he is a serious threat to them. He really, he manages to shoot several of them before they take him down. 
And yeah, so Xavier and Jean check Bishop's mind, which you know I appreciate that this isn't like they don't they're not just asked to believe because what he says sounds pretty ridiculous. And you know, obviously today in 2023, watching the episode, we know that the X Men didn't die in like 2021; they died in 2019. But the MCU is thankfully bringing them back. And, yeah, so Nimrod arrives, having also traveled through time, which made me really, you know, when I, when I watched the Days of Future Past film, I had forgotten about Nimrod, so I was like, ah, the, I wish they hadn't made the Sentinels so short compared to in the, in the comics, though I get it, you know, it's easier to re relate to, it's, it's easier to, you know, in, in live action, you, you know, if they're not... If they're if the sentinels are just humongous, you know, skyscraper tall, it's you know if he, the the fights just don't don't feel like as as they are, it kind of feels like just a not not quite even fight, but you can you can see everyone's head and entire body and that helps. But but yeah, you know, I realize, you know, the the Days of Future Past live action film uh, Sentinels are probably a mix of the regular Sentinels and the Nimrod. Both design and, and size and such. And I appreciate, you know, because we get the detail that Nimrod knows exactly how to fight Storm. He can sense, oh, she's claustrophobic, I bear, you know, I'll, I'll bury her. And Nimrod can actually heal, like they... they start to to take him apart and he heals his like T1000 very very cool and yeah you know Wolverine brings you know points out which one of us is the assassin Cyclops is certain it's not Jean who says I've had my dark days which is a nice little hint of something to come later in this show and Rogue, you know, get, gets into the room. She, you know, she hasn't heard what's going on yet. And then, you know, don't worry anymore. Gambit has returned. And, you know, Bishop's like, you're why I'm here. And, you know, gets the gun, aims, and it's like, I know he's kind of annoying, but I feel like that's maybe a little bit of an overreaction. But, yeah, very, very cool cliffhanger. <laughs> If you watched this episode, you know, back when it first aired, and you actually felt like, no, I don't need to see next episode, please comment. I would be fascinated to hear how you you didn't care about this. Yeah. But, but yeah, um, they again do well on the action. The various characters get strong character moments. I don't know if they needed to play the, like, ev basically every single time Bishop is in, is on his own at least, in, in the early, or, or in control, in early ep scenes of the episode, they play this, like, I guess, is, is it like a guitar? I, f I forget, but this, like, music cue, and it feels like, okay, we get it. You know, he's like from the south, I guess. It's you, know, you don't need to play it every single time. Maybe like do a variation, like a light, light motif or just, so. Just don't don't play the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, actually, it might be a slightly different note, but it's it's the same uh, instrument, and it just felt too repetitive in my opinion. Um. Yeah, like I you know. I'm very impressed with how much they managed to fit in. Like, in the comics, it's a bit darker from from the future. You know, Wolverine has lost one of his hands, and, like, you know, if I recall in the, in the comic, we see way more of the tombstones, although it's very clever to make it the team we know here, this episode. But, but yeah, you know, stuff that they couldn't quite... Yeah, they couldn't possibly have gone quite that dark for a kids' show, so... Let's see... Right, I did briefly want to say I realized after recording yesterday's vlog about, you know, 
I did feel like they did a good job using the different um, the, the Horsemen of Apocalypse. I may have mentioned that, but I felt like they actually in some ways did better than the live-action Apocalypse movie. Um, it felt a little weird to give to, to take something so big and, and do just one episode. Like, you know, I get why the Juggernaut episode was just one episode, for example. I get why Magneto's introduction was just one episode. But Apocalypse and his Four Horsemen... You know, Apocalypse is more than one episode this season, but the Four Horsemen are only in one episode. That kind of felt like, you know, maybe they... But then, I guess, you know, once you have them fighting, what else are you really going to do? You'd kind of have to have him maybe take over temporarily and have them mounting of a resistance movement or something. I forget if the Horsemen reappear later. Uh, but, but yeah, that is it. So... Make my marble.